Today, I'm speaking with Joanna Soki. Joanna, it's nice to meet you and thank you for coming. Nice to meet you as well. Thank you for having me. And where are you right now? I'm actually in Hungary. I'm based in Budapest, the capital city. Mm, okay. And what kind of teaching do you do? Um, I work uh, as an assistant lecturer at a Hungarian university called Károly Gaspar University, and I teach uh, teacher trainees, English teacher trainees, both full-time and correspondence students. The correspondence students are already teaching, so may, they might be primary school teachers and they want to become high school teachers. Right, okay. And you've written a great article for the March-April <laughs> issue of MET. It's titled Challenges of Hybrid Teaching. So firstly, yeah. what is hybrid teaching and how is it different from blended learning? Yeah, that's a very, very good question. Thank you so much for asking that. Um, so there are so many um, definitions right now in connection with all kinds of online teaching. And um, it can be a bit confusing to understand what hybrid teaching is. We need to separate it from blended teaching. Blended means that um, well, according to the definition I'm using, is that there are alternating periods of face-to-face -face and online. So let's imagine a course and we have two weeks of online learning, and then we come to the school to have face-to-face -face consultations, and then we go back to online again. Now, in the case of hybrid teaching and learning, this means that everyone is having the same lesson at the same time. The teacher is in the classroom. There are several students in the classroom and some students join in online. And that's the definition I'm using in this article. Mm. So the students, some students could be at home. Exactly, yeah. yes. And, you, and sorry. Yeah. Um, that can actually cause the main confusion and the main challenge actually for hybrid teaching that some are not physically there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You also use that term high flex learning, <laughs> hybrid. Yeah. Is, is that the same thing or is that a, is that good? Well, <laughs> that's also a very good question. Even to my understanding, it's not entirely clear. High flex, as I've seen, um, is predominantly used in university settings, um, or at least that those are the articles that I found. Um, they use high flex, but as I've seen, it's practically the same idea. I think they developed this definition to avoid confusion with other understandings of hybrid because some schools tend to look at hybrid as the way they are teaching. So, for example, somebody teaches offline, I mean, face to face, somebody teaches online and they treat the whole setup of the school as hybrid because somebody does this, somebody does that. Now, I believe high flex was um, because it's hybrid and flexible. So it's kind of that kind of, that sort of understanding. Right. So students could choose to come or choose to stay away. That's right. It. Exactly. Yeah. OK. And actually, my son is doing that right now. My older son. Interesting. <laughs> really? Yeah. So could you tell us uh, what's something you hope our readers will get from this article? Well, basically this article looks at the five biggest challenges I identified during a workshop I delivered back in October last year. And I that workshop was on hybrid teaching and learning. But my idea was that in order to give everyone the full experience, um, I'm going to deliver the whole um, workshop as a hybrid event so I could gather all kinds of ex um, experiences, feedback, impressions, and I just summarized the main outcomes of that experience in the form of five main challenges, and I'm trying to suggest some solutions as well. Great. So the main, main outcome of the article is to just um, familiarize readers with what can make hybrid difficult and how they can overcome those difficulties, even though 
hybrid is still something that requires lots of practice and lots of preparation. So the article is not going to say that, well, after these um, five tips, you're going to be the perfect hybrid teacher because it requires a lot of practice and, and patience, actually. Yeah, yeah. And that's, um, what would you say then is perhaps the biggest challenge? Um, I, I cannot really pick one. I would pick two because they, they are very, very closely interconnected. One is technical setup. Without the proper setup, it's very, very difficult to have a, a successful lesson. But yeah. if you have that, then the other challenge would be involving both audiences, the face-to-face -face students and the online students in the same way. Because um, a, like a common fear in connection with um, hybrid teaching is that those who are online are not going to get the same experience as those who are there face-to-face. -face. So why would they? Or if they are forced to take part in a hybrid lesson, what are they getting out of it? Uh, they are probably suffering from, from this kind of setup. And the challenge is to, to create the same experience, classroom experience for them as well. And this can be done. So it can definitely be done. But that's why um, advanced preparation and practice and patience is needed because it can be done. But everyone should take a part in it. So they should do their part and they should be well-trained and, and it can be done in that case. Mm, interesting. And you, you also mentioned uh, learn and training. We, we yeah. won't go into that right now. We'll let our readers um, explore the article. But you do, you conclude the article by saying that, you know, hybrid learning arrived as a response to the COVID pandemic. But you think it's here to stay. Um, I believe maybe in not not in this form because we cannot really predict the future everything is changing so fast and unpredictably but I believe some form of it is definitely here to stay because I can already see it I didn't mention before but I have also one language school course I teach business English and I can see that my students would like to have this opportunity. Business students are usually quite busy. They have different engagements and they would really prefer this arrangement because they got used to it thanks to the work from home arrangement, movement, whatever we call it. Uh, but since people already know how this can be done and that it can be done, they are going to expect it, or at least they are going to expect more freedom in how they are, how they want to join their classes. Right, right. And just now as a one final last question, just to wrap things up, looking outside of teaching, what's something that you're really passionate about? Um, actually, I'm really, really, really passionate about mountain biking. So I know that actually there's one in New Zealand as well, a mountain biking park. And that's what I do most of my time. Um, I go and ride my mountain bike. I try to visit as many bike parks around the world as possible. So I really hope to come to New Zealand and see that bike park myself. Right, wow. Oh, good, good. Joanna, thank you so much for taking the time to come and talk to us. And I really encourage our readers to check out your article. And as you Thank say, you the hybrid learning, uh, yeah, it is here and probably going to continue into the future. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.